Hello, and welcome to another episode of Fumbling Forwards with me, Frankie G. Clark and Louis de Cavapouchon. So, very quick one for you this morning, which I think really is life-changing. It changed my life this morning anyway. Oh, so without further ado, let's get into the episode. <laughs> Okay, so for those of you who follow me on social media, on my Instagram, you will know that I took Louis for a walk in the rain and I enjoyed it. I was splashing through puddles and just having a great time. I had a couple of messages from people about this saying, thank you so much for putting this on. It's given me the motivation to do something outside in the rain and can you keep doing motivational things? How can I be more motivational? And this morning I did something that I never do. I got up earlier than I needed to. Who here is guilty of setting an alarm and snoozing it? I always snooze my alarm and I always feel shit for it. Sometimes you need a bit of a snooze, right? Sometimes you just haven't had enough sleep and sleep works like an overdraft. The, the less sleep that you get, you are in an overdraft and it will just keep totting up and then you will have to sleep for like a longer period on the weekend to catch up on sleep. And if you don't, that overdraft will just sit there and it'll keep charging you for being in the overdraft. And that's something that I did learn through having a whoop band and through listening to Diary of a CEO. If you haven't already listened to that podcast, highly recommend it. It is something that I still dip in and out of, but at the minute I'm finding a lot of the podcasts that I listen to can be quite scientific and quite about thinking about stuff rather than about feeling. And how I'm feeling about things at the minute is what's creating the change. So when I got those messages off Instagram this morning, I was thinking, oh my gosh, like, how can I be motivational this morning? And I was actually feeling pretty good this morning. And it wasn't because I had been on a walk with Louis, but as you can tell, filming a podcast episode at nine o'clock in the morning, like that's pretty early. How are you already awake? Well, yeah, granted, I get up quite early for personal training on some days. Some days my alarm goes off at five, but other days when my personal training doesn't start until seven or 7.30, my alarm won't go off until half an hour before. But today I did something different. Over the last couple of months, you guys know, if you follow me on social media, I've been getting more and more frustrated at myself for not getting my shit together, for feeling rushed, for feeling like I'm not organized, for just struggling to keep on top of things. And it all starts with the very second you open your eyes in the morning. I deep down knew this. I knew it starts in the morning. And for some reason, I was still snoozing my alarm. I was still self-sabotaging. And yes, maybe I needed the sleep, but I know that I went to bed last night at nine o'clock at night. I did not need the sleep this morning. So Andy got up before me and he went and started doing his bike because he's training for his Ironman. He gave me a kiss and then I went back to sleep. My alarm was set for seven. I had a snooze and then I woke up again at about half six. When I checked the clock and it was half six and I knew my alarm went off at seven, I had a decision to make. I could either get up then or wait until my alarm went off, which I knew was a little bit too late, which I knew wouldn't give me time with Andy, and which I knew I would be rushing around getting ready for my client at half seven. So I chose to get up, to have a nice slow morning, and to not be late for my client, and to be prepared, and to look like I have my shit together. It all starts with the very first decision you make in the morning. And if that decision in the morning is to snooze, then maybe that's how the rest of your day is going to go. That's the glasses you've decided to put on in the morning and that is how you're going to see the world for the rest of the day. But the glasses that I decided to put on this morning were the, I'm going to be proactive, I'm going to get up and I'm going to do something. And consequently, the rest of my morning has gone that way. I've been really productive and we're here now. So I guess what I'm trying to say is what you decide to do the second your eyes wake up, the way you decide to look at life and the decision that you're going to make very first thing in the morning is how the rest of your morning, your day, your week is probably going to pan out. So if you can make that a positive decision, then great. I'm all for organizing a snooze. But even if you've organized a snooze, you've still snoozed. The best way that I have found to get up with the first alarm is to have a sunrise alarm clock because it naturally wakes you up with the light. So the light gradually gets brighter and it's a really natural way to wake up. Whereas noises are quite startling. And you've got to think back to like caveman times. Caveman times, if you're asleep and you hear a noise, it's possibly a predator. We are negatively biased. We are looking for negative things to protect ourselves. Whereas if you wake up naturally with the light, it's because you've not heard a noise that could be a threat. 
So that's the best way that I have found. As soon as that alarm goes off or birds tweeting or whatever natural thing you want to use, the choice has to be to get up. Because if you choose to snooze, you're putting it off, you're procrastinating, we're not doing it. If you need sleep, schedule it in. Make sure if you haven't slept well at night time, realistically 15 minutes isn't going to make a massive difference. A good 15 minute difference would be later on in the day, maybe on your lunch break, have a nap for 15 minutes. That will recharge your batteries. But snoozing in the morning, you might dip down back into a deep REM sleep and it'll be even harder to get up. And it's a risk that is just not worth taking. So that's my decision now going forwards. My decision going forward is to get up with my first alarm. I do have a sunrise alarm clock. And even though I know it will be difficult to do it anyway, because I did it this morning and it actually wasn't that difficult. The hardest bit was sitting upright. Once you've done that bit, the rest is easy. So hold your hand, hold that little version of you inside's hand and say, I've got you. I'm going to get you up. I'm going to make you feel better. If you need a coffee, if you need a rose hip tea, which I'm loving at the minute, by the way great way for me to hydrate myself because I am struggling to drink more water I love drinking warm things so it's a great way for me to hydrate but if that's what you need to wake you up get you out of bed then do it if you need to splash your face with cold water or you need to do one of those gua sha's in the morning to wake you up then do it but try and give yourself extra time in the morning that extra time this morning has set me up for the whole day and I'm a little bit annoyed. Well, no, that's a lie. I'm really annoyed at myself that I haven't done this sooner. I've been saying for months I want to get my shit together. I've been filming it. I've been sharing it on my Instagram. You know, I need to get my shit together. I'm holding myself accountable by posting it here. So here we are. And I'm going to keep myself accountable to you guys because I know that you listen. I know you follow the process. <laughs> I know you follow my journey. So you guys can drop me a message and just say, you know, have you gotten up early this morning? And do keep me accountable. I'm going to start doing that because I do feel really good this morning. And it's not by chance. It's not because my hormones are synchronized. It's not because I'm at a certain stage of my cycle. I'm at the worst part of my cycle where I'm supposed to be feeling like shit. And I did feel like shit yesterday and I did feel like shit the day before. But guess what the common denominator was? I snoozed my alarm and I wasn't being proactive and I did need a bit of a rest day a couple of days ago to just regather my thoughts felt a little bit stressed but this morning I've got up I've done what I've needed to do I've got ready and I've had a slow morning rather than feeling rushed I've set myself up for success and I feel so much better so take this as proof that it works one of the very first things I do with all of my clients is I look at their routines and we set up a routine together I don't give them a routine because it's not my life it's their life and I'll ask them what do you want your routine to look like in the morning and they'll say xyz and I'll say right well let's get down to the nitty gritty how long does it take you in the in the bathroom to brush your teeth go to the toilet get washed how long does that take you and we write down actually how long it takes for each thing and then we know how much time we need in the morning and then we add a buffer of five minutes just in case you can't find a shoe for whatever reason if you need an extra five minutes it's there and you're not going to be stressed. And that is the key to success. I've talked a lot about morning routines and one of the best books that I have ever come across is 101 Essays to Change the Way You Think by Brianna Wiest. And she's got loads of books, but one of the very first essays is about morning routines or at least having routines. And when I first read this, it made so much sense. And so it's something that I've referred back to time and time again. Basically, routines are important because they create habitualness. And the more habitual you are, the more predictable your life is. And the more predictable your life is, the more that your mood is regulated. If you're kind of being jerked around by life and rushing around and things, then your mood will fluctuate too and you'll be a little bit more sensitive to things. So that's what this talks about, the psychology of a daily routine. Now, this isn't a routine really, so to speak, but it kind of is. Setting your alarm with sufficient time to get ready is part of my routine now. And it makes me feel stable because it's expected every day. But then I know that I have enough time to get ready. So I'm reducing the amount of uncertainty and I'm reducing the worry and risk of being late. I did this when I was working in London. I lived about, I think it was 45 minutes out from the centre of London and I had to get a train. And there was two trains. There was one at 10 past 
six and one at 20 past six. And if I missed the 10 past six, I wouldn't be able to get a seat on the 20 past six one. I'd be standing up tired first thing in the morning for 45 minutes. When I started implementing this and making sure that I had enough time to get up in the morning to make sure I was there early, there was a coffee guy who started at six o'clock. I would grab a coffee and I would have 10 minutes to relax before the first train came. And I knew I was going to have a seat and I could then read my book or do whatever I wanted to do on the train. The difference in my days and in my self, my mood, my mind, when I got that first train, completely, complete difference. And I don't know where I stopped doing that. I think when COVID hit and I came home and I was no longer needing to catch a train and things, that's kind of when it happened. And I implemented it a little bit before my online classes. I would have 15 minutes of prep time for the day, have a coffee and things, and now I do my first exercise class. I think it was about seven o'clock in the morning. But somewhere along the line, that has stopped. And it's definitely made me feel a little bit knee-jerky, a little bit more reactive to things, a little bit more frustrated at myself. And this, this morning, has made me realise, wow, how important it is to make sure that I have more than enough time in the morning to get ready. Even if that means getting up at half six when I could get up at seven and rush, it is so much nicer for me, I'm just talking from my experience, it is so much nicer to get up at half six and be relaxed getting ready, have some nice music on, make sure I've eaten, make sure I've got everything and then to go to work than it is to get up at seven and be stressed and then realize that I've forgotten something. So maybe take this as your sign to try setting your alarm a little bit earlier to get up on the first alarm, to start your day with the mindset of, no, I'm not gonna snooze. I'm gonna get shit done today. I'm gonna have my shit together. I know that if I get up now, I will have a great day. If I snooze, I'll be stressed, rushed, and it'll affect the rest of my day. Maybe that might help you. And it's not to say that if you snooze your alarm once, you are gonna have a rubbish day. Sometimes bad things can happen to me and I'm like, I'm not gonna let this impact the rest of my day. And it doesn't because I can put it to one side and move on and have it as an anomaly in my day. Did I just say that word right? Normally it's really difficult to say that word, anomaly. (laughs) Anyway, I hope this gives you a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of motivation to get up on your first alarm, to get yourself a sunrise lamp because it is life-changing. The one that I got was like 20 pound off Amazon and there's different settings on it. So it looks a bit like a campfire when I go to bed and it's really relaxing. I did a webinar for Ailish. So for those of you who don't know, I do webinars for the the wellness club. Um, My friends Ailish and Jake run the wellness club and it is just an all encompassing service. It's incredible. So there's like PT, there's different webinars for things. And my section of it is psychotherapy education. And I did one on the subconscious and setting yourself up for success. And one of the things that was mentioned was about your environment. So how when we are feeling stressed, our amygdala has gone off and the parasympathetic nervous system, which is when you feel more relaxed, is triggered by your senses. So to bring yourself back down to feeling grounded and just to feel calm and relaxed, it's about having things in your environment that stimulate your senses. So you'll see that I have these really pretty lights. Well, that's there because I find them really calming and like comforting. The soft plush things, yep, look soft and comforting. The dog, He regulates my emotional system, but he's also very nice to look at. He's very cute and cuddly. Just sees like warmth. The guitars are there because they're stimulating my sight as well. So they're making me think about music and especially guitar, like acoustic guitar, country music is definitely something that lifts my spirits and makes me feel happier. I also have deliberately set myself by the window because when I'm filming these podcast episodes, occasionally you might see a bird fly past, but also the natural light is really awakening and it stimulates your, it stimulates your circadian rhythm and makes you feel more awake. But yeah, so there's lots of different things that I do for that. But another thing is smells. I use bergamot and we did this in a imagery workshop and it was all about where does the scent take you? What does it remind you of? And sometimes smells can have, you know, negative memories attached to them. But if you can find a scent that has positive attachments to it, then it's gonna subconsciously make you feel. I have this here, one of my diffusers. I got this off a client last Christmas. It's a Jo Malone. I'm so lucky, I'm so grateful. And even though, oh, so nice. Even though there's no um, juice left in the bottom, whatever it's called, the liquid, it still smells amazing and it just brings me into the here and now. So when I'm stressed doing my accounts and things and I get a whiff of the smell, 
it relaxes me a bit more. So what I'm trying to say is setting your environment up can really make such a difference. And if that's incorporated into your morning routine, you know, as soon as you get up and you spray your perfume, if I forget my perfume, it can have a different impact on my day because one, I feel less organized, but two, that smell, as I get it, I'm like, oh, that smells really nice. And if you've ever done meditation or mindfulness, it brings you into noting or bringing you into the here and now. What can you hear now? Because you're not thinking about the future or thinking about the past or thinking about things with work that could or couldn't go wrong. It's about right now in the present moment. I mean, there's loads of little nuggets here, but yeah, so I did that webinar and a lot of people said that it was really helpful. Setting their environments up for success allowed them to regulate more. It allowed them to feel a bit calmer. So stimulating your senses, whether it's a minty sweet or a nice smelling candle or something soft or a hot water bottle on your lap, whatever it is, it'll just reg help regulate you and bring you back down. This is definitely something with my ADHD that I have found has allowed me to be more productive. And if I'm thinking about my morning routine that I've done this morning, there's definitely an element of taste that sets me up. So that familiarity of having that coffee in the morning, for me with ADHD, caffeine releases dopamine. So it stimulates um, dopamine release. Anything that's caffeinated, it's kind of a stimulant effect. And for people who have ADD, ADHD, it can release that dopamine, which allows you to feel productive. So for me, having a coffee or something caffeinated first thing in the morning is really helpful. For a lot of other people, having caffeine first thing in the morning can be quite detrimental because you have a peak and then you have a bigger crash than what you would have if you had your coffee at like 11 or 12. So just kind of do what's right for you, track it and see what's best for you. But try and sit down and kind of map out what you want your morning routine to look like. Give yourself sufficient time to get ready in the morning because running around and feeling stressed is a recipe for feeling stressed. What you start your day like is likely how it's going to continue. If you fail to prepare, prepare to fail and proof is in the pudding. So give it a go. And if it doesn't work or if you don't like it, then stop or change the routine. Speaking from experience this morning, I feel incredibly different and just really really proud and excited for the rest of the day which is nice to say because a couple of days ago after I'd snoozed a million times I just wanted the day to be over but I think it's really important to remember on those days that you do have good days in the future and if I didn't remember that I would be stuck there for a bit. One last thing that I want to leave you with which I can't remember the full quote but it's about the paradox of change and when you stop trying to change when you're in a bad place that's when you change, when you stop trying. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because when I had a bad day a couple of days ago, I call it a bad day, but it's not a bad day. I associate for some reason being not productive or feeling tired and groggy as bad when actually that's just part of being human. It's not bad at all. It's just a less productive day. And as a female, I'm more likely to have cycles of that. But what I am aware of now, which I've been using and utilizing with being a coach and helping my clients with, is recognizing when you're on that time of the month. And it might not be during that time of the month, but it might be a week before you start recognizing, oh, I felt groggy this time of the month last month as well. And the month before, it is a bit of a theme. And when I started recognizing that that was a theme and that it did come back around, I also then recognized that there's certain weeks where I am more productive. And that was really reassuring. And it allowed me to take my foot off the gas on those days where I wasn't feeling great. And taking my foot off the gas on those days, I'm then fine the next day. I'm able to kind of go, right, I need to lean into this rest. I rest. And then funnily enough, the next day I'm rested enough to feel great. Whereas previously I'd be like really annoyed at myself and oh, I really need to get this work done. I really need to do this. So annoying. Like I'm letting myself down. I had all these different things to do. That just perpetuates the suffering and it makes me feel even worse about myself. And then I feel more unproductive. The paradox of change is when you stop trying to change. That's when you change. So set yourself up for success. Set your alarms a little bit earlier get a sunrise alarm or like a tweeting bird alarm, something a little bit more natural rather than like, eh, eh, eh. have a lovely start to your morning and just see how that ripples into the rest of the day. And if you can have something really soothing, nice smells, maybe a nice perfume that when you go to grab something, can you get a whiff of it on your wrist? Something like that to just help you have a little bit more of a 
positive day. But anyway, thank you for listening to this episode of Fumbling Forwards. I am still editing the episode with my special guest from Battersea in London, and I'm so excited for you to hear it. We also have another special guest, which I'm so excited for you to meet. I just feel really excited about this year. Like, I've already got two really cool special guests lined up. I've already rec recorded one, and yes, it's taken me a little while to edit, but I'm not. I'm trying not to put pressure on myself because it is a hobby and it's something that I'm enjoying doing. And as soon as I put pressure on it, I'll do the thing of like, ah, I don't know if it's a self sabotage or if it's just overwhelm with my ADHD. But yeah, we're we're just taking it nice and slow. So I promise it will be done. I've got a big presentation that I need to finish today, and then all of my spare time that I have over this next three days. Fingers crossed it should be finished on Friday, uploaded and out by Monday next week. So keep your eyes peeled for it. I am so excited for you to listen to it. Just as a little tip, it's all about being able to regulate without touching the painful things. And the special guest who's talking about it is um, a specialist coach in that area with confidence and positivity She's actually coached me before and I still use it to this day and it has had a phenomenal effect and it's something that has helped me with my morning routine and stick to it and implement it. Yeah, it's just, it really is transformational. I'm so excited for you to meet these two people. So thank you for your patience. It is much appreciated. Your support has been incredible, by the way. The amount of messages, follows that I've been getting. Like, guys, this community is growing so much. And I don't know whether or not we should create a community of, I don't know, fumblers so that it goes in line with the podcast and you can kind of network with the other people who are listening to this because we're all very similar. We all are interested in this podcast. Let me know if that's something you'd like and I can set it up. Um, maybe drop me a little message. There is an ability for you to message me at the bottom of this podcast, but if not, you can message me on my social media or my email address. That is fine as well. My ears are open. I'm open to any suggestions. Um, so yeah, have a great day. Thank you for listening to Fumbling Forwards with me, Frankie G. Cock and Louis the Cover Poujon. Have a great day and enjoy getting up tomorrow and enjoy your start to your day. Hey.